Hello, and welcome to our May 7th virtual studio visit with Franz Alexi. I'm Erin Becker. I am the director of the Cambridge Art Association, and we're so happy to have all of you here with us today. And uh, I'm going to pass the video over to France. Hold on one second. Hi, everyone. I'm Franz Lexi, and welcome to my studio slash apartment where I live with my brother. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, don't really talk much about my art on online or on the internet, so this is great. I really appreciate all you guys coming here and looking at my work and my space. And um, cool. Let's start this thing. Um, I think this is probably a good place to start with this piece right here. Um, it's, probably, it's one of the oldest ones that I'll be showing. Um, did this one in 2015, and um, I was thinking about how, you know, I'm interested in so many things, and um, I use art to explore all of these things. I don't really limit myself to any any particular subject or interest. And I usually paint from photograph. This one is from a picture of me as a child. Uh, so that's a, that's a fun one. And um, I use acrylic. Uh, usually ask me if I use oil. And um, this is all acrylic paint. Uh, I might sometimes use markers, uh, different types of acrylic paint. Um, oh yeah, I like I like rugs. So I'm mostly self-taught. Um, my degree is actually in accounting. Uh, I always wanted to go to art school, but uh, I never wanted, I could never take that leap to go to art school because that's kind of a, a risk. And this piece actually was inspired by my accounting background. I was working at this investment firm and they had, they had this rug in a hallway and, um, you know, just like walking from the office to the bathroom or just like to leave. I was always like mesmerized by the rug and the patterns and um, you know just working all day on boring spreadsheets um, you know putting a little data on a spreadsheet I thought it was kind of similar to that of rug making that sort of meticulous detail um, that ended up making like a, a big often kind of boring spreadsheet and I wanted to put that same energy into art. Um, so yeah, that's like the first one of this rug series that I have. Um, and again, they're all from, they're all from pictures like this rug, which is the latest one that I have is up here. Um, so, so I'm wondering, um, uh, Franz, if you can go back to that piece with the gloves. Um, I know that we were talking about that yesterday. And, um, mm -hmm. I hope you can share more with the audience about kind of where that um, piece came from and when you made it. Sure. So I made this one, I want to say like a month ago, finished it towards the, the beginning of last month. Uh, and 
I think right now it's kind of hard to not see this uh, within the context of all the coronavirus things that are happening. Um, but really the inspiration for it came uh, last year, towards the last summer. And, you know, what I had in mind was um, really, I was really thinking about like my relationship to art making and um, engage uh, with like difficult subject matters and really take the bull by the horn and be really raw with what I allow myself to paint and what I allow myself to talk about in my paintings. Because, um, again, as you can see, I have like different series that I make. Like this one is a landscape. I'm gonna have those, you know, some happy fish over here. Um, you know, a lot of times I don't really allow myself to paint ugly things um, or things that are somewhat that don't convey necessarily happy thoughts. And, um, you know, that is what I was thinking when I initially thought of it. But when the coronavirus um, happened, I felt a more of an urgency to, to paint that image. Um, and I remember uh, when I initially thought of uh, making that painting, I was going to go to the store and uh, buy the gloves and, uh, you know, take the pictures for that. But I went to the store and I actually saw the gloves for like six bucks or something. And I thought they were too expensive. And, you know, a year after, which is now, I went to the store and I think I bought the gloves for like more money. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. And again, um, I think while making art, um, a lot of times, you know, the you know the intention grow to you know, grow to have a whole other meaning um, given current circumstances. So uh, yeah, that was a it was really interesting to make this one. Um, another paint, another piece that I made that uh, has grown to have a different meaning or to you know this piece I think. Its meaning has, I don't know, has grown or has evolved, at least to me. Um, I, you know, especially now that everyone has to wear a mask to go outside. Um, but you know, when I was making it, I was actually thinking about a totally different, totally different um, uh, matter. Um, I'm sure right now everyone is very familiar with. Uh, Ahmaud Avery, the man that was shot in Georgia just for going out for a jog. Um, and while making this piece, that's kind of the issue, the type of issue that I had in mind, um, having a brown skin and being able to go out for a walk in the park um, is sometimes dangerous because just having a dark skin, you're automatically criminalized, uh, hence the ski mask. And, um, you know, this morning I went out jogging and I was thinking about that, um, especially that now if you go out, you have to wear a mask. And just the thought of me running outside with my black skin with a mask, um, I don't think that's, that's not as innocent of a thought um, if you're not black, but if you're a black person and you're running around with a mask on, um, as we've seen many times, that's a, it's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Um, but also, you know, I, I think it's a good thing to claim space, um, to be radical and, um, you know, even with uh, with this piece right here, which is kind of a uh, you know, it's a somewhat standard pot of flower painting, um, 
but I wanted to add some kind of uh, an aggression or violence into it. Um, this piece right here, I like I like portraiture. Um, I would often find myself try to hide the portrait or try to hide the face. Um, I don't know why, um, but that's a thing that I do quite often. And this piece is from a picture of my grandmother, and I use a molding paste. As you can see, there's a a 3D quality to it. Uh, I started using that somewhat recently. I do want to make more portraits using that. Um, oh, cool. That's the, that's the piece from the promo. Oh, it's actually one of my one of my favorites. Uh, I I did this one last year. Was it last year? Yeah, I think last year. And, um, and there's a, a whole lot going on there. Um, I was going through a somewhat hard time. Um, I was kind of confused. And um, I made this piece really as therapy. That was the first time that I approached painting as therapy, really, um, to try to understand myself, try to understand what I was going through and it was very much a cathartic process. Um, everything was happening at the same time. And um, I went out and bought, first thing I did was I went out and bought the balloons. And I took that as a starting point. And I didn't really have a plan for it of what I wanted to, the picture to look like. Um, and I think that's kind of a reflection of the current time. Um, it seems like so much is happening at the same time. And that's, um, that's actually what I wanted to reflect in this piece. Um, and the approach, the approach that I, make, I took with this one is, um, is kind of particular. It's very in the moment. Um, so this piece, I think, is very similar to to this piece but i think this piece is a bit more um i think there's a lot more joy coming out of this one um i made this one uh, using the same approach but i think i was in a better place mentally um, i actually went to the harvard arboretum um, to get uh inspiration for it um, this tree right here, I think, is from the Arboretum. Um, I took a picture of myself laying down and then painted from it um, very loosely. Um, actually, another favorite. Another rug painting over here. So, I'm sure everyone is familiar with. Uh, you know, I think a lot of, uh, when a lot of uh, black artists like myself, when we're starting up, we, I think there's a, a uh, Can you just repeat what you said um, at Lake? There's a little crackle there. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what was that? Um, whatever you said um, to introduce this piece, um, it kind of like cut out a little bit. Oh, okay, so if you can okay. just repeat. Cool. Cool. Um, so yeah, I think, I think like a lot of, uh, you know, as a black person, I think, you know, when we're first starting out, um, you know, we like to celebrate our black women and we're often drawn towards the image of the black woman with the Afro. I think that image comes, um, comes often, but I wanted to, I wanted to paint that, but I wanted to hide the fact that that's actually what I was painting. Um, and I think um, often as a black artist, we're, um, you know, since we have to deal with a lot of racial issues, um, a lot of times we're, we kind of have to get over that before we engage in more um, 
really more interesting topics because I think having to always talk about facial issues, um, although we, you know, unfortunately have to talk about it, I think it's kind of boring, really. I kind of want to, kind of want to get past that. Um, but unfortunately, we still have to deal with the same issues from years of oppression. But, you know, with this piece, um, um, a lot of times I kind of want to indulge in other topics like abstract painting. Um, in this piece, most of the surface is abstract. Um, but at the same time, it is essentially a painting of a black woman with an afro. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of, what I wanted to do was kind of hide the fact that essentially that's what I'm doing with this. It's a very simple idea that I wanted to kind of complicate. Um, but yeah, rugs, rug painting is cool. And I just love patterns. Um, Do you want to start taking some questions? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to start first with Casey. Casey, you're unmuted. Casey, can you hear me? Casey's question was, how do you choose the scale for each piece? Hmm. Um, I don't know. How do I choose the scale? I think. I mean, a lot of the a lot of times when I paint, I don't really think too much about the minute details. A lot of times, the entire concept just comes all at once. Uh, like for instance, um, this one is kind of small. I just really wanted it to be small. For some reason, um, I wanted the, the focus to be small. Uh, this one right here, I I wanted it to be this size because a lot of times, I guess to answer your question, a lot of times the scale, um, I decide the scale based on um, the space that I have in my house, really. Uh, I really just put a painting over here. Uh, and I wanted something that I could look at and it would still be new every time I look at it, but I wanted it to have a certain abstract um, aspect to it. So that's kind of how I picked the scale, but lately I've been working, I've been wanting to work smaller. Um, but yeah, I mean, it depends on what I do. Cool. All right. I'm going to, it looks like Remy Franklin has a question. I'm going to unmute you, Remy. <laughs> Where do you actually do your work? Where is your studio, per se? My humble studio is over here. In this tiny chair. That's where I do most of my work. Uh, that's my home. Also my studio. Sometimes I go on this table and do more stuff. Uh, but yeah, I usually work from home. That's why I was saying, so that really that very small space is where you do most of your work, even the large pieces. Wow. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's um, where I do. I mean, I've moved from different apartments. Um, so a lot of these work have been created in different other space, but usually it's um, just from my apartment or where I live. Uh, I'm impressed. It's very hard to work in small spaces. You have it down to a science. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I'm enjoying the limitations that I have now. Um, I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of cozy. I can wake up first thing in the morning and just like go at it. Um, and when I'm tired, I just go right to bed. Um, I like to live with my workspace. I like to live with my work. Um, so far, it's been working out. So. Great. All right. It looks like, um, uh, let's see who had a question. Susan Mary. Go ahead, Susan. Hi, Franz. Um, Hello. I, I wrote, let's see, I, your work is stunning. And I'm very, I'm very moved by what you have to say about your work. And uh, what are you working on now? Um, right now, 
I'm not really working on anything. I just finished this piece um, like a week ago. Um, I wanna I wanna do it like a little tiny landscape thing over here on this wooden panel. Um, actually, I'll show you what I have again. I think that will also relate to the question of how I decide on scale. Um, so this wall over here, as you can see, there's, I think that there's a missing piece. So I want to create a piece for this. Uh -huh. uh, cool. So yeah, and that's, a, that's, another, that's another series I have. Um, so this I use molding paste again, like I really touch these kind of love this. Um, it's kind of sculptural. Um, makes me feel like a sculptor and I kind of like that. Great. Um, our next question is from Paul Beckingham. Hi, Paul. Hi, friends. Um, I, I particularly like your, your uh, ability to, to get flesh tones and fabrics painted. It's really excellent. So good Thank work. You. I'm wondering how long you spent on the uh, the woman on the rug and whether that's a, a layered painting or a creamer or what your process is for that. Um, how long did I spend on this? I spent about maybe two months. Was it two months? I think it was two months. Um, I spent two months on that and I did this one. So I also painted this one from, from a photograph. Uh, so actually, I have the rug. I have this rug over here. <laughs> so that's the rug right here. Um, I have plenty of rugs. Let me get your rugs, people. If you have rugs you don't need, I have a use for them. Um, so yeah, my friend, uh, my friend uh, posed for me, and I took a photograph, and then I painted from that photograph. It's it's really excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Margaret Sheldon has a question for you. Hi, Margaret. Hi. I, I think uh, I, I must start off every one of these saying, I have so many questions. Okay. <laughs> so let's see, if I can, let's see if I can remember. Um, first, I'll say I love your work. Love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm on the other side of this, so I have to say, and it always, when I hear that someone like you hasn't gone to art school, I think, Oh, if I had students like that, I would have taught. <laughs> because, yeah, I mean, no, you're doing it all right, and you've got you've got a great way of presenting your work. I like your statements; like you're more articulate than a lot of artists. So take that; it's wow. just great for somebody to be able to set it up the way you did. Are you still working as an accountant? I am actually. I'm working part time. Uh, I think okay. I have to work. Uh, from home, so I'm still working as a, an accountant. Good, I was uh, curious about that. Um, so that leads me to my question, which is, um, do you have any idea where you want this to take you? Like, what's your art plan? Um, so I was working full-time as an accountant, and I sort of scaled it down to part-time now to be more invested in my art practice. Um, hopefully I can do this full-time. Uh, the goal is to art to do art full time. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I'm considering going to grad school. I'm seriously considering going to grad school, and um, hopefully, if I do get in, that'll give me more direction uh, for where I want this to go. But I think you know, going back to this painting, I mean, I have so many things that I want to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things that interest me, and I think that art is a good vehicle for that. Uh, and you know, just like I, th I don't think art is just painting pretty pictures. I can really right. uh, dive into the world with this practice. Um, and then the last thing, because I know there's others waiting to get in. Uh, people have artists they think you should look at. When I saw your the series of blue paintings, the landscapes, there was one with a the clouds and the sky. Yeah. I was just going to suggest you look at the work of Ed Mel, M-E-L-L. -L. I, think, I think it, will, okay. it will ignite you. Okay, cool. Okay, Ed and the Mel. last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to jump off. 
is be very thoughtful about where you choose to go to graduate school. Hmm. I wouldn't want anybody messing with your head. You're in a good yeah. place. <laughs> yeah. You know, thank you for saying that. That's, kind of, that's one of the reasons where, why I didn't automatically jump on undergrad for art. Um, I really enjoyed my freedom of expression and um, I wanted to have a, this the start that I've had so far. So okay. You. You're welcome. I'll see you around. Margaret, yeah. can you type the name of that artist into the chat? Um, I will. I'll do I that right now. It that way. Um, yeah. Okay. looks like we have a question from Cal. Go ahead, Cal. Franz, good to see you. Uh, hey, Cal, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. This is, this is awesome. Finally got the personal tour. <laughs> um, I guess my question is, what kind of techniques are you hoping to learn, whether in grad school or um, just, just you know, independently? Um, what's kind of the next couple of techniques that you'd love to explore? Um, I think with the grad school, I think one of the most important things for me or one of the things that I hope to get from grad school is – understanding what is art really because so far I've been making art by myself sort of like in a bubble with my own personal understanding of what art is uh, I don't really uh, know much about art history um, to the extent that I think a lot of uh, academics uh, do uh, so I would love to know what's the difference between someone who's just doing graffiti on the side of the street and art uh, and really how to capitalize on what I have now and understanding how that fits into the context of the art world, so to speak. Um, and technique, um, I would love to know what I don't know, you know? Um, I'd love to know what is it that I'm missing? What is, what is it that I'm not seeing in my own art? Uh, what else is out there to learn? Um, I think that's what I uh, hope to learn from that school. Awesome, thanks. All right, do we have any other questions out there? While you're thinking about that, I'm going to share my screen um, so that you can follow Franz on his website and then also yes. on Instagram. I've always wondered, what is, where does Ominous Cloud come from? <laughs> Ominous Cloud, um, you know, I think I've shown a few pieces here that have clouds in it and I don't know, clouds are cool. Uh, I've always... I've always been, well, no, not really. I, I wouldn't say I've always been attracted to clouds, but, um, you know, I've, have, I've had some personal stories of um, just like clouds. Like, I think the first time that I've, uh, that I think I've fell in love um, with someone and that I realized, oh, I love this person. I remember just going to sleep and having this dream about this big, purple cloud and lightning was coming out of it and it was beautiful when I was looking at it and um, I don't know. Huh. I've always thought clouds were great and there's this little band called Broadcast and they have a song called Ominous Cloud and um, like I think that I don't know I just always been attracted to the mix of something scary but also sort of mysterious and grandiose and um, I think like clouds especially scary ominous clouds are you know uh, like like a statement from quote unquote God of its grandiosity and I don't know just like being at all at an ominous cloud because you know it's scary but also beautiful. And that's kind of a thing that I, I kind of want to implement in my art, sort of like that duality of beauty, but also some kind of harshness. Um, so that's where that comes from. I like that. That's so much of life, the duality of Thanks. 
right? good and evil. Right? The good and the bad. Um, all right, looks like we had one person who wanted to jump on real quick. Um, so um, unless anybody else has any other questions, I'll give my pitch. Um, Cambridge Art Association was supposed to have our fundraiser tomorrow. We all know that got canceled. Um, but if you've enjoyed um, attending our virtual studio visits, we've been hosting them since April 7th. We currently have virtual visits scheduled until June 4th, and we'll continue doing them for the foreseeable future. Um, I know for me, it's been really amazing to be able to see inside so many artist studios, in many cases, studios that are in your home, um, like yours, and you know that you might not normally welcome people into. So um, if you can, or if you, um, you know, want to support uh, what we're doing and what we continue to do, um, I hope you'll visit our website, cambridgeart.org slash annual fund and make a donation today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and come back to all of you. And since it doesn't seem like we have any more questions, um, I'm going to uh, remove the spotlight and unmute everybody to say thank you to France for welcoming us and welcoming us into thank his home so today. Much. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. You're amazing. Thank you. That was great. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> so thank you so much, everybody. We'll be back here on May 12th with Stephanie Todd Hunter.